Greetings, unsettled soul. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks. Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of zip through this. Um, I found out about, oh my God, about literally nine minutes ago that somebody that I've known since, uh, since I was like 19, half my life, has committed suicide. I, and it's a, it's a friend of a very close friend of mine. And the only reason I'm still doing this show is because I promised everybody I was going to go live at 4.30. So I'm going to go ahead and do my show. If I, if I just don't seem like myself, you're going to have to forgive me on this broadcast, guys. Um, that's why my lower third doesn't have my name on it. I'm, I'm Sam I.B. All right, guys, I'm going to zip through these. Um, NewYorkTimes.com. Suicide bomber trainer in Iraq accidentally blows up his class. Uh, I had a whole bunch of jokes I was going to go into, and now I'm not in a joking mood. But uh, I am going to do this. I am going to say that sometimes uh, people get what's coming to them, you know. And uh, I'm just, you know what? I'm going to detach myself from anything personal. This guy got exactly what was coming to him, plain and simple. Okay, I'm just going to say it. You are training people to kill innocent people, and you got what was coming to you. I, I knew as soon as I read this, I was leading off with this story. NewYorkTimes.com. If there is such a thing, it would, if there was such a thing, it would probably be rule number one in the teaching manual for instructions for aspiring suicide bombers: don't give lessons with live explosives. Explosives. In what represented a cautionary tale for terrorist teachers and a cause of dark humor for ordinary Iraqis, a commander at the secluded terrorist training camp north of Baghdad unwittingly used a belt packed with explosives while conducting a demonstration early Monday for a group of militants, killing himself and 21 other members of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, army and police officials said. Uh, this reminds me of the story, I forget, it was a while ago, some child molester piece of human filth decided to try to molest a 10-year-old boy. The 10-year-old boy was not a martial arts uh, black belt. He was a martial arts black belt, pro black belt prodigy. He broke the man's elbow and uh, they busted him for attempted child molestation. Um, this reminds me of that. Iraqi citizens have long been accustomed to daily attacks on public markets, mosques, funerals, and even children's soccer games. So they saw the story of the fumbling militants as a dark and delicious kind of poetic justice, especially coming amid a protracted surge of violence led by the terrorist group, including the rise in suicide bombings. Just last week, a suicide bomber struck a popular falafel shop Near the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here, it says, killing several people. On Monday evening, Arad Hashim, working the counter at a liquor store near the site of the attack, burst out laughing when he heard the news. Can you blame him? This is so funny, Mr. Harshim said. It shows how stupid they are, those dogs and sons of dogs. He is quite right. This is God showing justice, Mr. Hashim continued. Well, I don't pretend to know what's in the mind of God, but I can see why he thinks so, and I would not be the least bit surprised if it was true. This is God sending a message to the bad people and the criminals of the world to tell them to stop the injustice and bring to us peace. Evil will not win in the end. It's always life that wins over death. Another resident of the area who lives near the ministry building that was targeted last week said, I heard this today when my friend rang me in the afternoon to tell me about it. He was so happy as if he was getting married. And I'm going to, you know, again, you're going to wonder, Sam, why are you celebrating somebody dying? I'm not celebrating somebody dying, especially with uh, what I started the show with. But let me say something. Granted, if someone takes their own life, that's their choice. But that's not that's not what I mean. Um, if you take a person who is killing people, who is training other people to kill them because they're a different religion, or maybe in, in this instance, they're the same religion, they're just not the sect that you want. For instance, uh, this isn't even like Islam is killing Christians. This, the analogy would be uh, Baptists killing Catholics. We have people of the same religion here killing each other. When you have murderous scum, people that blow up children, which is even worse than molesting a child, um, when these people get blown up, 
I'm sorry. I'm not going to celebrate death, but I'm not going to weep over these people either. It's just not going to happen. It made me happy as well, the residents said. I hope that their graves burn and all the rest of them burn as well. I was not happy with the number killed, though. I wanted them all to die, as I remember my friend who was killed by a suicide bomber in 2007. You see where this rage comes from? Uh, the trouble is, uh, people that are against Islamists, and I'm not an Islamist, I'm a Christian, um, people who speak badly about Islamists, of which I get accused of doing and do not, uh, do not realize that these people talking are also Islamists. These are the Islamists that you and I and every thinking person have absolutely nothing against in the whole world. Um, Iraq is facing its worst violence in more than five years, with nearly 9,000 people cured last, killed last year and almost 1,000 people killed last month. Um, the trouble is, and while I don't think it was a good idea for us to have remained in Iraq, and I'll read the rest of the story at the New York Times, uh, you know, it, 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 there are some people very quite angry in here, and you can see why. I mean, again, they've been dealing with this forever. They are furious, and I see why. But um, you hear people say that there is, there was no, I, there was no uh, Al Qaeda in Iraq. That's not true. Saddam Hussein clearly gave safe haven to Musab al Zakawi when he needed some place to go. Who gave it to him? Saddam Hussein. The trouble is, we used. A very, very thin bit of proof to decimate a country, which is what we did to Iraq. Um, and, you know, you're, I'm somebody who wasn't against the war on terror when it began. We were going after a certain number of people who allegedly did a certain number of things to us. We were completely sold a bill of goods. Um, George Bush will go down in history as one of the most murderous, evil people of our times. And... Um, you know, we, we needed to be out of Iraq a long time ago. Uh, some would argue we should have never gone there. And you know what? Those people have a very strong argument, in my opinion, because what we have done there has made it worse, just like we did Libya. Um, FukushimaDiary.com. Uh, multiple nuclei removing system can't filter four sorts of radio nuclei. Radio Again, for those of you new, um, this is originally uh, written in Japanese, so if my English sounds choppy, it's because of it's a translation. On 2-5-2014, the NRA announced the multiple nucleide removing system, ALPS, which is the Advanced Liquid Processing System, can't filter out four kinds of radionuclides. TEPCO and the government of Japan are expecting ALPS to remove 62 of the major nucleides from contaminated water and discharge it into the sea. The tritium still remains in the water. The specific names of those unfilterable nucleides are not announced. TEPCO is trying to add further absorption parts in the system. Since they had ALPS in test operation in March of 2013, the system has never been in full operation. And I'm telling you what they're, what, what they're going to do. It's why I put this article in here. Let's say I have a knife, a crossbow, bow and arrow, and ninja throwing stars. And I'm going to hurl all of them at you over and over and over and over again. Well, I'm going to, you tell me that's not safe, Sam. You're going to kill me. So I take everything away except the throwing stars, and I just start chucking those. Guess what? You're doomed. Um, that's exactly what we're seeing here. Um, leaving tritium, leaving other nuclear elements, is leaving you open for cancer heart disease and all of the things that we cover on this show all of the time and it's not going to help anything by saying well you know we got 62 poisons out hey, we got 59 of them we took out you're fine let's dump that into the dump that into the ocean we got almost all that out of there the point is what they can't get out will kill you just as quickly as what they already took out. So, I mean, common sense will get you through the day, and clearly TEPCO, which is GE, has none. Um, this is the newamerican.com. This has to be the stupidest damn judge I ever heard in my life. Well, you know what? I'm not comfortable being a white guy. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to call myself Asian. Now, I'm not Asian. 
that I have any Asian blood in me anywhere. It's one of the few nationalities that aren't in me. But I'm going to say it because it makes me feel better. And I want you to tell me what a wonderful Asian I am. And if there is a, if, if there's a meeting and only Asians are invited to speak about uh, issues, I want to be allowed to go because I think I'm Asian. I'm Asian inside. You just can't see it. But I'm Asian. America, oh God, Lord, poor America. Judge says boy claiming girlhood can, girlhood can use the men's room. Idiot. Moron. America's firsts aren't what they used to be. Amen. Where they once included putting a man on the moon and a heavier than air flight, now they're trillion dollar deficits, a trillion dollar pieces of metadata NSA processed, and six trillion dollar foreign military adventures. And coming to you straight from Maine is another fantastic first, writes Yahoo News. School officials violated state anti-discrimination law when they could not allow a transgender fifth grader to use the girls' bathroom. You are not transgendered, you are confused. And I've said this a hundred times. I have no problem with gay unions. No problem at all. I have a problem with gay marriage. If the church does not want to marry you, they should not have to, nor should they have to recognize it. There are some churches that will not marry me and Christelle because we lived together and had sex before we were married. You know what? They have every right to tell me to take a flying leap if that's what they want to do. Also, if you're a guy, to quote Michael Savage, and you get your schmeckle cut off, you are not now a girl, you are a mutilated guy. I support your right to do it, but I'm sorry. If you were born male, you are male. If you are born female, you are female. And if that's closed-minded, so be it. I don't care. I have every right in the world to be what you call closed-minded. And if you are someone that's gay, and I have a million, I have, I have so many gay friends that sometimes people think I am, um, I don't, I have no problem with gay people. But I have a problem with, I identify with another sex. I don't care if you identify with a tree that doesn't make you a plant, moron. According to a ruling by the highest court in Maine that believed to be the first of its kind, the family of a very confused student, Nicole Mines, at the Maine Human Rights Commission sued in 2009 after school officials required her him to use the staff, not student, restroom. The court concluded that Orano school district actions violated the Maine Human Rights Act. No, you just violated common sense which bans discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Now, I've been someone that's always believed that all bathrooms should be unisex. That's where I'm from. But since they're not, boys are born boys and girls are born girls. No matter what you wish you were born. No matter what you feel like you were born. You are what you are. If you're going to be gay, be gay. You want to change your sex and mutilate yourself, go right ahead. Don't try to make all of us worship you for it. You have the right to do it. You have a right to not be picked on for it, but you do not have a right to have everybody bow down to your every wish. Nicole Vane's now 14 and taking hormones to, pre to prevent male puberty is a boy originally named Wyatt who changed his name in the fourth grade and has been trying to live as a girl. Good. And everybody can do whatever he wants to, but that doesn't mean we have to kiss his butt for it doesn't mean every other parent has to give up their rights for yours. And one of the idea he was subjected to discrimination. First, realize that government anti-discrimination law doesn't actually ban discrimination, which is in the process of choosing one or some from among many, and is something we all practice. After all, schools won't allow boys, at least those who still claim to be boys, to use the girls' facilities. So basically what we're walking into now is wherever what you associate with is what you are. B.S. Friends, uh, if you get to Canton, Ohio, make sure you do go to the Arcadia Grill. And I'm not just saying that because they're a sponsor here. I'll be dead honest. I asked them to be a sponsor because I wanted to find sponsors that I could come on the air and say, hey, yeah, you know what? Because I think uh, uh, Pepsi are filth for putting the high fructose corn syrup uh, in their products. So I don't want Pepsi as a subscriber, as a uh, advertiser. I asked the Arcadia Grill, because I believe in the Arcadia Grill. I eat there. 
I get drinks there. They're a wonderful restaurant, and you're really going to like their food. Please go to Court Avenue, go to the Arcadia Grill, and let them know Sam from The Correct View sent you. Friends, three more stories that I want to get to. This is Infowars.com, Christina Sarich. Maybe I need to read my bylines more, but I don't remember her. Hawaii bans GMO biotech, citizens cheer and excitement. Friends, we're doing it. That's why I'm speaking into a camera, sometimes even when I'm not in the mood to do so. Why? Because together, you, me, all of us, we're doing it. I can't do this myself. Um, uh, for those of you that watch, my views uh, on, uh, I don't know, I get probably a thousand a month, a couple thousand a month, depending on what I do. Most of my views go on TheMediaSpeaks.com. A few of you find the live version that I post here. That's not going to change everything, but you know what? There's a lot of people that I've never heard of who are doing exactly what I'm doing. And together, we're making this happen. Uh, Hawaii is a unique place not only because of its cultural and agricultural diversity, but because the politicians sometimes actually listen to the demands of the people. Fortunately, the mayor of the big island Hawaii, Billy Kanoi, has now banned biotech food from his island, thank God, and thousands of Hawaiians are cheering his decision to sign Bill 113, even though the agricultural industry largely opposed it. That's because they're eugenicists and they don't mind poisoning you. Um, they're already rich. Why do they care? You know, they don't need all of us. He can stand proud no matter what part of the islands he travels to as this unprecedented move to keep the aina or land as pure can be upheld. Furthermore, Kanoi wants to encourage community-based farming and ranching with a nod to local commerce instead of international biotech monopolies. The only problem with the bill is that it exempts the island's GMO papaya industry, uh, but is a huge step in the right direction to ban GMO crops. Um, you know what? That just means if we all stop buying papaya because they might be from Hawaii, they will uh, stop the GMOs in it too. That's how a bunch of people all do it, like I just said. Um, in a letter to the city council, members Kanoi uh, he states, Our community has a deep connection and respect for our land, and we understand we must protect our island and preserve our precious natural resources. We are determined to do what is right for the land because this place is unlike any other in the world. Amen and God bless. Uh, let's make sure we stay on it and we can beat Monsanto and all of the other GMO monsters putting garbage in our food. Uh, two more stories. NBC, uh, for NBC, it's from Southern California. They got away with murdering my son, mother of police beating victim. Now, this is really sad. Uh, this is the opposite of the last story. This is, uh, this is where we can all band together and do a lot a better job, people. Protesters gathered on Monday, as they should have, um, to rally against the not guilty verdicts of two former officers for the beating death of a mentally ill homeless man. In another news uh, regarding this, uh, recently I read today where he was thrown out of a Denny's uh, not by the management, because everybody there just couldn't stand to look at this cop's face. I hope he gets that everywhere he goes. He murdered somebody. It wasn't it? Wasn't uh, it? Wasn't self-defense? He murdered him. An Orange County jury found Manuel Ramos and John Cincinnati not guilty of all charges, including manslaughter in the 2011 death of Kelly Thomas. A surveillance video showed police pummeling the stun gunning and stun gunning him. When I first heard the verdict, my friend Cindy asked uh, if I had followed the case, and I mistakenly said that I had not. Then when I saw the uh, beaten face of the victim, I remembered immediately that I had followed it. I had simply forgotten, unfortunately, the poor man's name. But, uh, yeah, this, this, this cop murdered someone, as you're going to hear. Ron and Kathy Thomas told reporters that the verdict effectively tells police officers that they can kill people and get away with it. They got away with murdering my son, Kathy Thomas said through tears. It's just not fair. I guess it's legal now to go out and kill now. Ron Thomas says the couple are, are torn up by the verdict, I would imagine. This is egregious. The audio, the video, any bad cop can now just walk around and do what he wants to do to any of us, she said. We're all in trouble now. And that, it's important to mention, she said, any bad cop. Because you always hear, not all cops are bad. Any bad cop that is there now has can carry you whenever they want. You're scum. You mean nothing. However, Ramos' attorney, John Barnett, says the officers were simply doing their jobs. Yeah, Siga Heil, that's what the Nazis said. Committed no crime and had no malice in their hearts. No, nah, no, nah, not at all. Freaking SS. 
These peace officers were doing their job. Pe a man was killed in the name of peace. These peace officers were doing their jobs, operating as they were trained. No malice in their hearts. Not out of someone, not out to get someone that night Barton had said they were working. Yeah, never mind that the victim was calling for his dad as he was beat to death. Protesters gathered Monday night at the Fullerton Police Department where Ron Thomas spoke, saying he's planning on using his son's case to call on California legislators to change the police officer's Bill of Rights. About a dozen, dozen demonstrators also rallied at the Fullerton Transportation Center, the site where police fought with Thomas in the summer of 11. People who supported Thomas' family called themselves Kelly's Army, and they felt that the DA let them down. Of course they let them down. The police got away with cold-blooded murder. Uh, last thing I want to get to, Kit Daniels, InfoWars.com. Uh, shout out to Kit for getting back to me uh, on the contest personally himself, no less. I appreciate it. Uh, report, teacher tells student Jesus and not allowed in school. Friends, it is today's dance of the day. Um, for those of you that don't know, I am going to try to bring back the dunce cap of the month. I'm going to have to send out February's and everybody else's all at one time. It's going to cost me a fortune, but I'm going to try to do it. Uh, please donate to me, Hotmail, the, the correct views at Hotmail.com. All money you give to me goes to a better show. Um, I, I mail out a dunce cap and a, uh, a certificate, uh, for your stupidity, uh, to one person every month. Again, I'm going to be playing catch up. One person every month, and uh, I've gotten so many stories about dumb people that I can't get to it in one show, even though I cover six at a time when I give the award out. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the, the dunce of the day, which is something now every show we have at least one idiot. And uh, here's our winner. The school teacher who told a first grader that Jesus is not allowed in school while tearing off messages or with reciting a religious legend that the student attached to candy canes he brought for his class a nonprofit group claims uh, again this is a bit dated but since it didn't win the dunce cap of the month I kept it uh, each candy cane that the first grader Isaiah Martinez brought from his classmates at Mercy Elementary came attached with the legend that a candy cane maker created candy canes to symbolize the life of Jesus Christ, which the teacher reportedly tore off of each cane and threw into the trash under the direction of the school principal. Let's remember we have a separation of church and state. That means that no state or uh, public school, for that matter, can endorse a religion. This kid was not endorsing a religion. He was practicing free speech. Uh, after telling Martinez that Jesus was not allowed in school, the teacher handed him back his candy canes without the messages attached. Isaiah then nervously handed the candy canes to his classmate and feared that he was in trouble for trying to bring a little Christmas cheer and good tidings to the class. The nonprofit group advocates for faith and freedom said in their press release. Again, a bit dated, it was sent to me and I wanted to cover it. The nonprofit group demanded that the school in West Covina, California stop officials from bullying and intimidating Christian and religiously affiliated students. So that is your dunce of the day. Um, I'm going to be doing a story on uh, how it's been proven that Christians are uh, now the most prosecuted, uh, persecuted religious group in the world. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views Choppy Show today, friends. Uh, I'm going to close with this. Uh, again, teleprompter free news. There isn't a person listening to this that hasn't debated whether or not they should end their own lives. Has it ever crossed my mind? Come on, I'm 41 years old. Of course it has. When you do so, even if it makes you feel better, you're going to be leaving behind other people. Other people that might not be able to handle it very well. And maybe they'll do the same thing. And no, I'm not saying I'm suicidal. And I mention that because uh, the, the government can off me tomorrow and say, oh, he did it because he was sad. Look at his video. Uh -uh. I'm not talking about me. But if you commit suicide, there are going to be uh, people that you don't, you don't know how they're going to take it. You don't know what's, what they're going to feel like. And uh, again, no one knows what tomorrow holds. Am I going to say that everything was right, white and roses because I didn't commit suicide? No. But I know my dad died a couple of years ago. And if I'd have committed suicide when it crossed my mind at one point in my life, um, I, who knows? Maybe my father wouldn't have had the will to make it for as long as he did when he got sick. So I guess I just wanted to add that in because it matters. If you're listening to this, it matters. It goes beyond what your belief in God and the afterlife is. 
and it affects people in the here and now. If you're listening to The Correct Views, friends, thanks for doing so. Please go to themediaspeaks.com and look at the work of Kyle, Court D. Lake, and myself. Good night, friends. God bless.